Hi guys, I'm Carl from Carl's Fire Makes and welcome to another instruction video. In this video, I will be showing you how to make hanging planters. I will be showing you two different variations, one where I will be throwing the pot upright and one where I will be throwing the pot upside down as a closed form. A closed form might be a little bit more difficult to throw, but that way you do have more variation in shape. So just see for yourself what you like best and without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started. I take a piece of clay and you can of course make these pieces as big as you'd like and I start centering the clay. I first press the clay towards the middle and then I start coning it up and pressing it down. You can repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. And then I press the clay downwards a little bit and I start opening up the shape. I do this by pressing my middle finger into the middle of the clay and then I pull the clay outwards towards myself. And what I do with this piece is make the bottom a little bit round. So I make the bottom in the middle a bit deeper than the sides. I leave a little bit of extra clay at the side so that I can trim it a little bit more. And that way I can make the bottom quite round which I will later show you when trimming it. Then I start pulling up the walls. I do this by holding a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. I repeat this multiple times so that the clay becomes thinner and the walls become higher. And as you can see I always like to hold the thumb of my left hand on top of my right hand so that I can move both my hands at the same time. And since I'm going to make this planter a little bit round and quite wide, I already start pulling the clay outwards from the beginning. And then when I have the height that I want I go over it an extra time to just form it into the shape that I like. And then the piece is already finished and I go over it with a sponge to get rid of any water or slip that's in and on the piece. And then I take a wooden knife to cut away a little bit of excess clay at the bottom. This will just save me some time when trimming it. And I also clean my bed with this. And then the throwing for this part is done and I let it dry for a day before it's leather hard and I can trim it. And now over to the next planter. With this planter I start the same way so I first take a piece of clay and I center this by cutting it up and pressing it down and I repeat this multiple times. And this is where I'm going to do something else than I did before. I first press it down quite far, this will make it easier to open it up. And then I press my middle finger into the clay, but this time I press all the way down to the bed. So I don't have a bottom in this piece, because I'm throwing the planter upside down. So this is actually going to be the top and the inside of the planter. And sometimes it's easy to use a wooden knife to cut away a little bit of clay that you can't get rid of with your fingers. And then I press the clay towards the middle, because sometimes it becomes a bit too wide or a bit uneven. And then I start pulling with the walls. I do this the same way as I did before, so I hold the sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. And I repeat this multiple times. But this time, because I will be closing the form, I already start to pull the clay a little bit inwards. Because this will make it easier to close the form later on. But before closing it, I first want to make the walls as thin as I can get them. And as high as I can get them. So I just go over them a few times. And then when it's as thin as I could get it, I start slowly closing it. I do this by holding my hands around the bottom. And then I move them upwards while moving them more towards the middle. So that the top becomes a little bit less wide. I do this multiple times to slowly close the form. Often when you press the clay towards the middle the clay becomes a bit thicker. That's why I sometimes pull it up an extra time to get a little bit more height and keep the walls nice and thin. And as you can see the form starts to close more and more. And I just keep pressing the clay towards the middle. I've decided to make the bottom of this shape a bit pointed. But since you're throwing it upside down you can make this in any shape you'd like and you can just play with this. But I keep it quite simple and just make it a bit pointed. And then to fully close I just press the clay towards itself at the top and then I go over it with my fingers to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then the shape is already finished and I go over it with a sponge to get rid of any water or slip that's on the piece. And then I take a wooden knife and cut away a little bit of clay at the bottom. It's also important to get rid of any water or slip that's on the inside of the pot before you close it. But in my case I didn't really have a lot of water in there so it was not necessary. And then I go over the bottom here with a sponge again to smooth it out and make sure it's one fluent shape. It is important to make a hole in the piece, since it's a closed form the air doesn't have a way out and when the clay dries it shrinks. So it's important to make a little hole in it so that the air can get out and your piece won't crack when drying. And then this piece is also finished and ready to dry before it's leather hard and ready to be trimmed. After both of the pieces have dried I start trimming them. I start off with the first one and I place this upside down on top of my giving grip and then I start trimming it. As I said I kept quite some extra clay at the sides here so that I can trim it nice and round so I just take a trimming tool. And I keep going over it to make it nice and round and just cut away quite some clay here at the sides. And I often move from the bottom to the top, but you can also move from the top to the bottom, that doesn't really matter. And just like that I cut quite a lot of clay away and I try to make it a nice and round fluent shape. And then when I'm done trimming I like to go over it with a wet sponge to smooth it out. And then I go over it with this trimming tool. This trimming tool isn't really sharp, but it helps me to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge. And this helps me to smooth it out. And then I go over it with my finger to smooth it out even more so that I don't have to do any sanding and it's just nice and smooth. 
I saw that I still had a little bit of excess clay in between the part that I trimmed and that I didn't trim. So I put his little arms onto the given grip and then I closed it again to just trim away a little bit of clay at the side here. I didn't trim away a lot because the clay was already quite thin here. But this way I just made the whole shape into one fluent shape. This isn't always necessary, it just depends on the shape that you're working with. And then I smooth this out the same as I did before, so I'll go over it with a sponge, then with this trimming tool, and then again with my finger. And then the trimming part for this piece is done, and I just take it out of the giving grip. And then it still needs some holes to hang it, but I will first trim the other planter. Since this one is pointed at the bottom, I can't put it down normally, so I actually hang it into my giving grip, so the bottom doesn't touch the giving grip and it just hangs in between the arms. When I do this, it's not always perfectly centered, so what I like to do is hold my nail against it to see where I get some scratches. And then I press it towards the other side to get it into the middle, and you can just repeat this multiple times until it's in the middle. And then I start trimming it. It didn't need a lot of trimming, but the bottom here was a little bit thick because it's quite difficult to pull this little bit of clay here at the bottom up when throwing. And if you cut this away at the bed when throwing, the whole piece might come off and you might mess it up, so I would just recommend to trim this. So what I'm doing is just going over it with the trimming tool and I cut away a little bit of clay on the inside and the outside and I also make the rim centered and that way I just try to make it as thin as the rest of the piece. And then when I'm done trimming I also go over the parts that I trimmed with a wet sponge and then I get rid of the slip with this trimming tool and then I go over it with my finger. Since I hang it in the giving grip I put it in quite tight and you might get some scratches. This isn't a problem, I just take a wet sponge and go over it a few times and then it's nice and smooth again. And then the trimming part for this piece is completely finished. Then it's time to make some holes in it. I like to just make the holes with a hole maker, this is just the easiest way in my opinion. I place the hole maker at the part where I want to make a hole and then I slowly press it in while twisting it. And then I take a little bit of clay out. I like to make 4 holes and then hang the planter with 2 strings, but you can of course make more, more or less holes, whatever you'd like. I would make at least 3, otherwise <laughs> it might not really work. And just like that I make 4 holes and I tr just try to spread them evenly onto the planter. But I don't measure it or anything. And then what I always like to do is take a sponge and go over the sides of the holes. Otherwise these are quite sharp, but by just going over them with a wet sponge you smooth them out and they're nice and round. So I do this on the inside and the outside with all of the holes. And then I do the exact same thing with the other planter, so I just make 4 holes in it. And I also smooth out these holes with a wet sponge. And then both of the planters are finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. And after they've been biscuit fired I start glazing them. I decided to glaze them with a glaze combination of two glazes and the first glaze I'm going to use as the base is Honey Flux. I apply this on both of the planters on the outside and I'm applying three coats all over the piece and I'm glazing all the way up to the rim but I'm not glazing the rim because I will put them upside down into the kiln. It's important to let the glaze dry in between coats and if you'd like you can speed up the drying process by using a heat gun. And just like that I apply three even coats all over the piece. I also glaze the inside but I'm not glazing it with this glaze because I almost run out of this glaze. And then after applying 3 coats of this glaze I start applying the next glaze. For this one I'm using the glaze Trim Plump which I apply 3 coats as well but I'm not glazing it all the way down to the rim because I was afraid it would run too much when it melted in the kiln. So I kept a little rim without this glaze. And then over to the next planter I already applied the 3 coats of Honey Flux. And the second glaze that I'm applying on this planter is green tea from Mako. You can combine Mako and Emiko glazes together and see what happens. You can't be entirely sure if they are food safe, so you might like to try this out and do some tests with this. But since this one is on the planter, it doesn't really matter. And then I apply some clear glaze on the inside. I apply two coats. And as I said, I run out of the other glaze. Otherwise, you can put the same glaze on the inside as on the outside. And then what I always do is twist the piece on top of a wet piece of fabric. This way, I don't have any glaze at the part that's going to touch the kiln shelf. And as I said, I'm going to glaze fire this piece upside down. So I keep the rim unglazed. And then they're finished and ready to go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it or learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make these hanging planters yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Carlos because I would love to see it. I hope to see you next week, bye!